submission means for the feminine woman in the 21st century? Oh, let's get into this. It's quite juicy. But I am really excited to have you. For those of you who are new to my channel, I am Chingy. I am your dating and relationship expert, founder, and course creator for the Black Swan Relationship Academy. Com. I am here to teach you ladies how to present as a high value, high status, high worth woman that high value masculine men completely adore. And if you are into that masculine guy, then you are on the right channel. And if you want to emerge as the black swan that you are and be the most rare creature on the earth, then you are at the right channel. And so today we're going to be talking about some issues that are a little bit sticky okay a little bit sticky <laughs> stuff that we don't want to discuss but needs the conversation of course needs to be had now listen to me ladies we're gonna have nice girl rehab coming up very very soon the link is in the in the description link below do go to the description and get yourself registered for this masterclass it is absolutely free along the way you will be offered vip and other versions of attending but you will ultimately be able to book your seat for free now I'm really excited because this is a gift that I wanted to give back for all of your support as we changed over from Chengi's World to Black Swan Relationship Academy. I wanted to be able to do something that was valuable, that would that would say thank you and to really be able to do this great work that God has given me to do so that we can transform lives, love lives across the world and I can reach one billion women, a billion women that I cannot reach without your support, without you watching, liking and commenting. So I'm hoping that this video is going to inspire you to hit that like button because I'd really appreciate it and perhaps you might even hit that share button and make sure that all of your friends and family and your social media get to be part of this transformational black swan journey that you are on okie dokie let's talk about submission submission is a dirty word for the modern woman I have to admit to you ladies um, submission was a dirty word for me for many 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 years I didn't want to hear about it I didn't care to hear about it. I didn't really care to hear about it or know about it. Uh, my feeling whenever I heard the word submission was subservient is what I heard. What I heard was you are trash. Uh, and what and it would often come from usually well-meaning pastors who had a miserable looking wife sitting in the front row. Uh, it always came from people that I did not really respect or have much respect for. All I would see is this poor woman sitting there looking like shoot me and this man with the Bible preaching submission and or you know men that I would perceive as somewhat arrogant and often submission and the word submission within the church has always been used a little bit for abusive purposes and of course I grew up with a real disdain for the word submission and it has taken me a very long time to to disembark and realize that we are not being required to submit to every man uh, we are required to respect everyone uh, but in terms of submission it is really taking yourself from a place and I cover this in my book but it's taking yourself as the queen that you are and being really able to put your crown you know to to bow with your crown like Queen Esther did it wasn't that she wasn't a queen it doesn't mean that she was not adored by her king it did not mean that she did not have status in the kingdom and that her word um, and her instructions were taken lightly it just means that when she was before the great king she knew that her place was to be submitted was to be under him was to show him honor and respect now listen she wasn't doing that for everybody she was doing it for a king and so I realized that it was incumbent upon the feminine woman to understand that submission is part of the game it's part of the formula your ability to humble yourself your ability to come under and allow yourself to be led not just romantically oh we want a guy that will lead what we normally mean is we want him to pay the bill and we want him to you know, take us on am amazing adventures and be that guy that, you know, spoils us and the guy that calls first and the guy that, you know, texts us in the morning. We want him to be first. Um, we want him to show up for us and make us feel secure. But really what, that's as far as it goes. We're not really prepared to follow his lead in general and 
completely and that's because often we don't really vet and select men that are high status we don't really know what a high value man is we don't even understand what masculinity truly is and and and, and honor it in that way we also don't understand that we are our most powerful when we're sitting back leaning back and enjoying the ride we also don't understand the power that we have over masculine men who desire to please us and that by leaning back and letting them lead they believe and, and they feel good because they get to lead us into beautiful things we also don't realize that submission is the natural position of the feminine woman and that by submitting and understanding that I have a responsibility and a role to submit to a man, then I have to take my time to really figure out if this man is a fair and just leader. This is the key. The key for the modern day woman is to ascertain within herself, is this man fair? Is this man just? And is this man cherishing? Because whenever you have a fair, just and cherishing leader, it becomes, you are therefore inspired to submit. When you know deep down inside that this man is going to do you good, that this man means to help you, he's, he's, he's here to, to provide, he's here to give, he's here to protect you, he's here to please you, then you naturally are going to sit back and feel like, okay, I am happy to follow your lead. Now, this is still not so simple because at the end of the day, submission really, really counts when you don't see things going your way. And this is the rub. This is where the fire works and the sparks come out to play because now we don't see his leading as a thing that is beneficial to us. We no longer perceive his movements and his decisions as something that'll be of benefit to us. And so at this point, we leave and abandon our femininity and we rush in and we go to war in masculine energy and those battles are often lost, are they not, ladies? All we do is scream, shout and throw a hullabaloo. And some of us maybe succeed in subduing the man that we will eventually have no respect for. <coughs> And some of us, um, you know, just get upset over and over and over because masculine energy by its very nature is not easy to move, especially when it's focused and has set its, its, its mind on something. But a feminine woman knows how to navigate her way around the iron will of her masculine man by understanding the power of silence and the power of leaning back. A masculine man will consider his decision-making process if he does not feel that he is having to fight to establish it with his feminine. If he feels the weight of responsibility of trust, because to be trusted is more powerful than truly to be loved. To be trusted means that I am putting the burden of the outcome on you, and I am trusting that this outcome will work in my favor. Can you choose a man whose decision-making processes you trust, who moves in such a way that you can tell that his intentions are good? This is important if we are going to really fulfill the femininity matrix and be submitted. Are we prepared to really make those judgments? Once we have decided that this man is a man that I can trust, when we do get to those cross points, and this works for women in relationships, women that are dating, there will be a point where he wants to go right and you want to go left. And how you navigate that place and that space can determine whether or not you do the distance with a man. Many of us have been met and found by the most incredible masculine energy men. And these men thought, right, I found myself a black swan, I found myself a kingmaker, I found myself a, a, a high value woman. And then we get to those crossroads where he wants to go left and you want to go right and you don't handle that conflict like a high value woman. And I've already done a video on how high value feminine women handle conflict. So do go through the channel and have a look. You don't handle that peace well, then eventually he you become a woman that he does not want to commit to because he does not want to hitch his wagon to a problem or a liability or somebody that is going to have issues with every turn that he makes. And so you end up in a long-winded um, sort of relationship. And no, I'm not saying that we should just sit back and be doormats. I'm coming. I'm coming for you. 
so basically you need to have made those assessments having made that assessment understand that you are going to get to a crossroads okay and at that crossroad you need to learn to be quiet yes if that triggers you um, i understand <laughs> i really do uh, I do, I understand. The hardest thing for the modern woman who is in perpetual masculine energy is to keep her big mouth shut. Okay, because we don't always understand the weight of our words, we use them lightly and we bleh, just say whatever is on our minds to say and don't always uh, respond to, to situations in the way that we ought to be responding because we, if we don't fight, and I've done a video already on this channel, I think it was last week, uh, Sunday's video um, about really how to deal with masculine energy and blossom into a feminine woman so you can go and watch that for more but at this juncture what we want to be able to do is really just um, you know understand silence silence is what the Bible says a, a quiet and peaceable spirit is 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 creates an atmosphere and we can't underestimate the power of atmosphere atmosphere is determines what grows underneath the atmosphere there are certain crops you cannot plant in certain parts of the world because the atmosphere will not allow for that crop to grow so if you want certain things to grow in your relationship in your dating there is an atmosphere that you as a feminine woman because you we are the atmospheric temperature we are the atmosphere of the relationship we are the temperature of the relationship the man is the one that holds space and structure within the context of the relationship but you and I as feminine women are the ones that bring about the atmosphere the tempo the temperature of the relationship the tempo is is, is what the masculine man brings but we bring the the enjoyment the fun the flirtation the playfulness and the the essence of the relationship if it's going to be peaceful or if it's going to be war it is often brought about by the woman and so understanding that silence may be the absence of words coming out of your mouth but it is definitely not a quiet energy silence is very noisy in terms of energetic um, mastery so those of you who have not done the energy mastery class you might find this intriguing but those of you who've done the energy mastery class at blackswanrelationshipacademy.com um, will understand what I'm trying to say here we are energy we are spirit we are always communicating and energy takes different form a quiet and silent energy is an energy that says I am holding emotional space for you to be able to make a mistake. I am holding emotional space for me to show you that I trust you. And I'm holding emotional space for you to know that I am thinking about what's going on here. I am observing what is going on here and I am showing you respect. Now, Chengi, am I going to just stay silent about everything? Of course not. You know, one of the people that I, I really respect, Dr. Pat Allen, talks about keeping your mouth shut unless it is illegal, immoral, and unethical. Now, the reality of it is, if, is it legal, is it moral, is it ethical? Are you going to have to call a doctor, a lawyer, or the police? If it doesn't require any of those, then it is perfectly fine to go for silence and quiet. And I'm not talking about a pouting silence. I'm not talking about a punitive silence. I'm not talking about a sulking silence. I'm talking about a peaceable silence that believes and trusts that this man means me good. Listen, for the most part, a lot of the issues that we have in dating and relationships have to do with trusting that very point that this man means me well once you've established that trust it's as simple as two people in a car let's say for instance you and your partner the man you're dating or your husband uh, decided that you're going to go to a certain part of town we're going to get to part c of a certain part of town and uh, when we get there we're going to do a b c d e f g and but here's the thing you go through part c every day on your way to work you are always in part c you're always there you know every back road because you work there this is your road you understand this road this is your area of expertise the one thing you know in life is how to get to part C in the town. So your your boo, your bae, your new interest comes on board and he's like, right, we're going to part C and I'm driving. And you're like, okay, you, you go 
you you drive, baby. And he gets into the driver's seat and he puts in the sat nav and the sat nav is taking him around the houses. Now, at this point, what are we gonna do? Are we going to are we going to quarrel and say, listen, I know the pathway, I know how to get there, I know how to turn left, and I know how to turn right. And if you'd just taken the third left, this is not going to help the dispute. What is it gonna cost you? Okay, he's taking this thing as part. It might end up taking us an extra 30 minutes that I didn't wanna have to spend. But at this point, he has done nothing illegal, immoral, or unethical. At this point, we can get those quiet points in. We can be peaceable. We can say, would you like me to suggest an, an easier route? No, I know what I'm doing. That's fine. And sit back, lean back, and enjoy the ride. This is not just about two couples or two people in a car. I'm using this analogy for life. 90% of the stuff that is destroying relationships and causing men to de high value men to deselect you black swans um, is really often your inability to decide what is a worthwhile battle. A worthwhile battle is a battle that needs you to call the police, the doctor or a lawyer. For the most part, much of it is just really showing up in a way that, like a dear person recently said to me, cooperates. All he wants is cooperation. That is the new word for submission. Uh, when I heard it, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. We they just want us to cooperate. You know, let's just cooperate with this situation. And of course, that doesn't mean that we cannot make our respectful requests, that perhaps we might want something different or would feel comfortable with something different. And that's perfectly fine. Fun, and that's really an issue of how we communicate as high value feminine women if you don't know how to do that feel free to go and enroll in the how to talk to men so they listen masterclass on blackswanrelationshipacademy.com but at the end of the day we really have to perpetually be asking ourselves over and over again is this something that is worth me rising up and fighting about is this something that really needs me to verbally verbalize my disdain okay Speaking up when you're being abused, speaking up when you're, somebody's taking advantage of you is essential. But here I'm not talking about those situations. I'm talking about situations where he's saying left, you're saying right, and you'd really rather just go right. And right now, in this moment, you want to demonstrate to your high value masculine man that you will cooperate, that you will go along his road. Oh, you know, you will also have worked out how far you're prepared to follow that road, especially if you're not married, if you are just dating according. Um, you know, it's really about communicating to the masculine because he is designed to need to lead. Um, unless, of course, you're happy to be with a feminine guy who's happy for you to lead, in which case, most times, you eventually lose respect for him and that often has its own issues. But if you have to be a leader, then a feminine guy is for you. And of course, on this channel, we really just talk about how to uh, be with a masculine energy guy. Once you have learned the principle, you see submission is never really about physically bowing. In some cases it is. It is really about how we manage our emotions around a masculine man, how we, how much emotional intelligence we're prepared to, to show, how much humility we are prepared to give. And I know humility is a dirty word nowadays. Nobody wants to be humble. Nobody wants to submit to anybody anymore. We seem to think it's a dirty thing, but it is order. It is divine order. An army will most likely win a battle if they follow the commanding officer's commands. Lives are saved in war because of following orders. And sometimes following orders sucks. And sometimes following orders means, you know, just killing somebody that you might not want to. It, it, sometimes following orders doesn't always work out for you, but it allows the team to win. It allows the country, the, the, the people to win. There's a reason why sports have captains. We need leadership. It is divine order. It is how the world works. The reason why you have a CEO, we need order. Order is not our enemy and order only works when we are prepared to submit to somebody else, not because they're smarter, not because they're better, not because they know better, but because we have assessed that pertaining to this area of life, they are in a position to help us to prosper. We don't always like the people that lead us, but at least in romance, we get to choose the person that we are prepared to lead us to victory. Lady, if you really do not believe that the man that you are with can bring you to victory, you do not need to be with him. If you do really do not believe that the man that you are with intuitively and at a very gut level is not 
after your good. He has no desire to, to please you and to take care of you and to cherish you. You shouldn't be with this man. This is not the kind of man you need to be with. But perhaps you have... Um, got a little bit carried away and, and you there's so much contention in your relationship and I really want you to try silence. I'll tell you a story before I end this video. I had a client who um, called me one day. She had been on my books for a while and you know I've been I was helping her through some marriage uh, situations that she had. She wasn't necessarily married to the fairest of men or uh, the man that would always do right by her. But she, you know, he was a fairly decent provider, protector and a cherisher and she did not want to leave that marriage because she was happy with the setup. She just wanted a better relationship. But girlfriend had a mouth on her. Oh my goodness, when she got going, she got going. Eventually she created a situation where the husband said to her that he no longer wanted to be with her. He sent an email and said, I'm, I want a divorce. And at this point, she calls me and she's like, girl, not actually her voice. It's more like, Chengi, I need you desperately. This is the email that I have received. And um, what am I going to do? Because I don't, I feel like he means it. He's threatened it before, but this, this time is different. And I, and you know, she was like, I will pay you anything. I will double your fee. I will quadruple it. I will give you anything to save this situation right now. And you know what I had to say to her? I said to her, keep your money, girl. Keep your money. I want you to do two things. I want you to keep your money. And the second thing I want you to do is keep your mouth shut. And she was like, but how was, I was like, I want you to be silent. I want you to say nothing to him. I do not want you to speak and I don't want you to be quietly pouting or silently angry or silently this or the other. I just want you to be silent. I want you to be quiet and I want that whatever happens, if he calls you and wants to discuss it, just say to him, I'm not ready to talk about it right now. I just want you to be quiet. Why did I tell her to be quiet? Because I know that he was anticipating her mouth. He was anticipating that she was going to go for it. And when he, when she did go for it, if she did go for it and did say what she would normally say in order to be combative, he would then be fueled to follow through. What I read was a man who was frustrated. What I read from his email was a man who had come to the end of his tether. And this was his last ditch attempt to try and bring order into his home. But what she read at this point was he's ready to leave. I knew that she needed to behave in a way that was not typical. She needed to behave in a way that was submissive. She needed right now in this moment to call upon the quiet and silent nature of the feminine in order to restore balance back into her, divorce, into her marriage so that she would not be divorced. And she sat there and for three days, she was like, I am angry, I'm upset. Why does he want to do this? Of course, she went through the emotions, but she listened to what I had to say. On the third day, he drives back home and he's, why haven't you responded? Why have you stayed silent? And she remained quiet and eventually he... It all got very heated because he was frustrated because he wasn't getting from her what she was used to. And eventually she burst out and said, fine, you can have the divorce if you want to have the divorce. And yet that was still part of that submissiveness. And well, let's put it this way. It was a very sexy evening that they had after this conversation. They, they had a very sexy evening. Yes, um, it was very wonderful. Well, I wasn't there, but I'm told that it was very hot and steamy situation and there has been no talk of divorce. I didn't ask her to do anything but remain silent. She sent a message to me and she said, Chengi, I cannot believe what silence was able to do for me right now. I cannot believe how powerful silence is. This is the power of submission. A lot of the battles that we are fighting, a lot of the back and forth that we're having in the power play dynamic of the second phase of relationships is not necessary. Much of the stuff that you're fighting with, with your boyfriend about, your husband about, or the guy you're dating about can be resolved through silence, a respectful silence, because eventually there's something about silence that says, 
maybe there's something going on in her and I need to find out. Silence is actually quite scary for men. They're accustomed to us yelling our heads off every two seconds so that we can be heard. But when we are quiet and we're silent, this is very scary. I remember a, a guy friend of mine telling me that his guy friend called him and said, I am afraid of my wife. And he was like, why are you afraid of your wife? He's like, she will never fight with me. I've been married to her for 20 years and she will not fight with me. She will not raise her voice at me. No, it doesn't matter what I do, she will not fight with me. And so so he um, heard his wife one day, came back from work and heard his wife talking to uh, a company, I don't know if it was a phone company or, or some other company, and she was going in there. She, she was like, Rah! right, and he said, I am scared of her because I know what she's capable of doing verbally. I know what she's capable of doing and her silence makes it very unpredictable for me and I'm scared, <laughs> right? And I'm not saying that we shouldn't make men afraid, but I want us to see that from the perspective of a quiet woman, if a man cannot predict you, if he cannot predict your anger, if he cannot predict your temper, if he cannot predict your words, then you become an atmosphere that conducts his respect, an atmosphere that he has to cherish, an atmosphere that he has to check in with, and an atmosphere that he enjoys coming home to and being a part of. And so I hope that the message has gone out clear and direct and that these examples have really helped you and you can truly turn your relationship around with a little bit of silence. I look forward to seeing you on my next video and I look forward to seeing you in the Nice Girl Rehab. In the meantime, Take care of you. Love you lots. Bye-bye now.